Hello. Welcome to Friday Night Yoga. I'm running a little bit late, so I'm just going to get started right away. Tonight, we're going to start in supported fish or in supported bridge or whatever you need. If you're playing along with music at home on Spotify, I'm going to use Dylan Yoga 5. So, supported bridge, you can either place a block under your sacrum and just lay in bridge position, or you can use two blocks, one on medium, one on high, or one on low, and one on medium. I'm just going to place them like this, one for your head taller than the one behind you. And we're going to start. Long way, it's a longer spine actually. We're just gonna surrender. Your feet can come together. Oh, you can I really want to open the heart because we're gonna do some work with the wall at the end. And I find that you know, there's a dolphin and Triangle and things like that will really help us with our wall work. Let's just go ahead and start and surrender. Breathe. As you're laying here, try to relax. Maybe the soles are keeping together. Maybe your legs go long. That's all the first step, but it's right for you. But the bottom block is. Along the leg of your spine, right underneath your shoulders, and the fire block is underneath your head. I'm just going to surrender here. Maybe the shoulders relax more, maybe the chest goes wider. Maybe the legs relax more, and your knees come further down. Maybe they don't. This is all through surrender and not forcing it to happen. And as you're laying here, maybe you set intention for your practice today. Maybe it's compassion or gratitude or love or health or tolerance or staying sane during this coronavirus stuff. Whatever you need, just set an intention that your practice tonight will help you through that or support that intention. As a reminder, everything in yoga is a suggestion, not a command. So anything I offer to you tonight is just that, an offering or suggestion. If something is too easy, feel free to modify it more complex. If it's, more, if it's too simple, feel free to make it. You get a picture. Either make it easier or more difficult based on what you need. You guys got it on yoga, even without perfect environments. So if you don't have a block or a blanket or a mat, just find a comfortable spot for the break of pain. Just push yourself for a nice challenge. Really focus on that breath. Nice, slow inhales and exhales, primarily through your nose. Continue to relax. Just kind of allow my dogs dropping a ball on me and pull around. That's their team there. Yeah, that's funny. All right. So you've got blocks underneath you. If you just have bridge, go ahead and lift and come back to your arm. If you're here from that stretch. And then one arm up overhead. I'll go ahead and roll that side. And rise up to center. And from here, we can sit on the edge of a block or just sit in a nice, comfortable, easy position. Or 
We're going to inhale our arms up overhead. Exhale, okay, so release. And I like to start with very deliberate spine up brain sequences, so we'll do that as usual. Inhale up. Exhale down. One more time. Inhale up. And exhale down. Inhale up again. This time we're going to bend to the right. So exhale, lean to the right. Your hand can stay close to the further out. You can lean, but keep that bottom planted on both sides. Look forward, down at your hand or up underneath your arm. Continue to breathe, and with each exhale, maybe lean a little bit deeper. Inhale, slowly rise up. Exhale, release to the left. Inhale, rise up to center. Exhale, take a twist. Right hand behind you, left hand outside your right knee. Sit up tall on your twist. Maybe look over that back shoulder. Keep the twist in your spine. Now slowly rotate and look forward over that left shoulder. And exhale, release. I'm going to remove that block now. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, twist to the other side. Keep in a twist, slowly turn in your body, slowly turn your head, and look over your right shoulder. And exhale, release. Bring your hands to your knees. And just shrug your shoulders up and back a few times and forward a few times. Bring your hands around the spine. Continue with your own breath. Starting from the bottom and walking your way up. And the head just kind of comes along for the ride. You're not swinging it actively or doing much work with it. It just kind of moves just because your spine is straightening and rounding. Once more, return to neutral. Bring your hands in front of you and rest your fingers, palms facing up. Inhale, arms up overhead, straighten your little back. Exhale, curve, and bring your hands to parallel to the earth. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, round. Continue with your own breath, inhaling up, exhaling down. I'm going to talk a little bit less than normal today. I feel like I've been teaching a lot, but not doing as much yoga as I normally would. I just kind of need to breathe a bit more. So just follow along, do your best. You're going to teeter totter, grip your fingers nice and strong. You're just going to move the arms, inhale one side up, exhale the other side down. Or I mean, exhale to neutral. Inhale the other side up, and exhale to neutral. And this will help activate and stretch side of your neck. Just do what's right for you. One more time on each side. Turn the neutral. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Relax and inhale, look down at your right shoulder and slowly exhale and rotate your head to the left. And start to do full revolutions, nice and slow. Anywhere that's uncomfortable, maybe you pause. I slept on my neck kind of funny last night, so I've got a spot that is not cooperating today. It's right here. It's kind of flared up since I was in college at times. So I might just have to take it easy tonight. We'll see. Inhale the other direction, nice and slow, and rotate. And relax, continue. Take full circles. Return to neutral. Make sure your shoulders a few times again. I'm really needing this today. And go ahead and come to hands and knees.
some hands. Never in your yoga. You want to create as little space between the earth and your hands as possible. And you want to spread your fingers wide. Pointer and middle finger facing forward. <laughs> Shoulder width apart for your hands. And you want to create as little space between the earth and the fingers as possible. And you're bending your elbows ever so slightly. You want your arms are straight. That way you're engaging your triceps rather than your wrists. You're actively engaging with your outer two fingers and thinking about your knuckle mounds and finger mounds doing some of the work. And then your knees, a hip width apart, and then directly under your hips, you're two behind. Now we're going to continue that cat cow sequence by lowering the belly, gliding the chest forward, shoulders back, maybe looking forward, and exhale round, starting at the bottom of the spine, working our way up. Okay, close down. And continue to inhale lower and forward. And exhale up. If you're aware that, just continue with your own breath. If you're aware that it's just uncomfortable, just try to relax. Sometimes my jaw gets tired. I've been talking a lot during the day, so you might see me kind of moving my mouth around, trying to get that to relax. Let's go ahead and turn to neutral. And we're going to inhale, bring our right leg behind us, parallel to the earth, toes pointed down. Exhale, round the spine, knee to the forehead. Inhale, extend. This is our cow. Round for a cup. Extend, we can bring our left arm forward if we want. We bring our knee to our elbow. Extend, round, and extend. Continue with your own breath. And bring your hand around and meet your foot if you'd like. And gently kick into your right leg. And then bring just the hand down and foot to the left side of your mat and top twice and arc up and over nice and straight and tall. Inhale on one side, exhale on the other. This moon, which just helps us open up our hips. Once more on each side. Try and bring your knees together. Actually, knees wide. Toes together, hands forward, forward to the earth for child's pose. Surrender to the earth. And stand here. Or inhale slowly, walk your hands off the right side of your mat and center down for child's pose with a twist. Taking the twist, inhale slowly, walk through center. And exhale to the left side. And now slowly walk back to center. We ground our hands and feet. Check your alignment. And then inhale. Left leg back. Exhale round. Inhale straighten. And exhale round. Inhale straighten. And walk into ring. Your right hand forward. And now do knee to elbow. Continue to breathe as you extend and straighten. And then your next extension, go ahead and hold it for a breath. Then bend your back knee, right hand around, grab your foot if you'd like. Glide your chest forward. And then put your hand and Bring your foot to the outside of your mat, tap twice. Mark it up and over, tapping twice on each side. And we're to breathe as you go back and forth. Focus on height over width or speed on this. Once more on each side. Turn to neutral. So we're going to do a bit more with dolphin and things like that today. So instead of coming to our first down dog, we're coming to our first dolphin. Putting our forearms parallel in front, curling our toes under, and rise the dolphin first. The dolphin, our heels won't really reach the earth, and that's okay. We can walk a little bit closer if we like. I'm just going to sit here for a while, look forward, and let's down dog, we look back. 
try to still get that upside down knee shape. And maybe straighten your arms into down dog. We walk that dog, working on lowering the one heel that's fine, bending the other knee. Maybe inhale forward through a plank. And bend your knees through a bear. Straighten back into a down dog. And inhale. So then walk your hands back to your feet. And exhale, fold forward and surrender. Straightening your legs, maybe grabbing one elbow with the opposite hand. Just gently rocking side to side. My dog is growling at me, of course she is. And exhale, surrender, fold forward. Inhale, slowly rise up. Vertebrae, okay? Vertebrae. Stand up nice and tall into the mountain. Just engage your quads, hamstrings, glutes, triceps. Hands face forward. Right hand to the right hip and lean to the right. Inhale, rise up through center. Exhale, left hand to left hip, lean to the left. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, lean back, arms up overhead, thumbs interlacing. And exhale, bring your hands to your low back. Maybe interlace your fingers or keep your hands facing upward. Inhale, lean back. Exhale, bend your knees and gently fold forward. And as you're folding forward, maybe straighten your legs now. Maybe bring your arms up overhead. And now slowly relax. Bring your hands past the earth and rise up to chair. Knees bent, shoulders relaxed, arms straight. And inhale, straighten your arms and legs and exhale, look right on your toes. Inhale, lower. And exhale, fold forward, swan dive. Walk yourself forward into a plank. Look up a side plank, either on your knee or floating. Start with the right side. Key to a good side plank, just bending your elbow. Slightly lifting with your hips, keeping your top shoulder in the plane with your legs. And exhale, return to center, and inhale, switch sides. Whichever variation of side plank is right for you is perfect. And exhale, release to center, back to down dog. And then right leg in the air behind you, exhale, bend your knees, stack your hips. Inhale, straighten, right leg. Exhale, glide it forward and surrender that back knee into a low lunge. Inhale, lean back with your hips and arms. Exhale, glide forward, open up your arms, take a full revolution. Bring them up through low crescent. Inhale, your right hand to your right hip. Exhale, your left hand forward and take a twist. Knee outside your or elbow outside your knee if you can. Twisting from your belly. Exhale, release to center. Inhale, front knee back to meet your back knee. Exhale, fold forward, or fold down into a narrowing child's pose for a breath. Inhale, keep your forearms planted and glide forward with your up dog or cobra. Exhale it down dog. Inhale. Left leg in there behind you. Exhale, bend your knees, stack your hips. Inhale, straighten your left leg. Exhale, glide it forward. Back knee down, low lunge. Inhale, lean back. Exhale, glide forward, open up the arms, take a full circle. Bring your arms up for crescent, relax your shoulders, low crescent. Inhale your left hand to your left hip. Exhale, lean forward. 
and take a twist. Bent leaning forward, helps decompress the spine, makes the twist more accessible. And exhale, release to center, plant your hands. Front knee meets your back knee. Exhale, narrow your child's pose for a bow. Inhale, glide forward, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down low. Wand your forearms for a dolphin again. Maybe walk your knees from, or let your feet further forward. Maybe one arm, one leg comes up in the air and releases. And maybe the other one does too. Come back down to hands and knees. Walk yourself up the camel. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, hands to your low back. Elbows pointing backwards. And just bring your hips forward. Maybe start to look up, but not too high. Too far back, we're still early in our practice. And exhale, release. Come back through hands and knees. Up through down dog. You walk your hands back to your feet. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up. Arms up overhead. And exhale, move to your toes, releasing, lifting your heels. Exhale, lower your heels. Just one knife to the earth. Inhale, walk forward into down hug. Your next inhale. Right leg near behind you, and exhale. Bring it forward, rise up through crescent. Just gotta move back a little bit. Cutting off the camera angle. Decapitated yoga is not particularly interesting. Front knees bent, back leg is straight. Arms up through crescent. Inhale that right hand to the right hip. Exhale, lean forward. Take a twist again. You can stay here or open up your arms or bring it. Your hand down inside your foot for a revolve side angle. Exhale, release to center. Plant your hands. You can take three legged down dog or just to a plank. Take a vinyasa flow, high push up to low push up. Inhale for up dog or cobra and exhale for down dog. We're going through the sequence a little faster than I would normally just because I want to have more time for looking at the wall. If this is too deliberate, just go at your own pace. Maybe too aggressive, but too deliberate. Inhale your left leg up there behind you. Exhale, glide it forward. Rise up through crescent. Relax the shoulders, straighten the arms. Inhale your left hand to your left hip. Exhale, right hand forward. Take that twist again. Or take any variation of it that you prefer. Exhale, release, flat your hands. And take a vinyasa flow, high push up, low push up, up dog, and down dog. Lower your knees, keep your child's pose. Knees wide, toes together. You're welcome to stay in child's pose. Force your hand up and over your back and around the outside of your hip. A little twist in that direction too. If you prefer to kneel, go ahead and unwind. Let's switch sides. Left arm up overhead, underneath. Or maybe the right arm up on the outside of your left hip. So always come back to hands and knees. Go down dog. Now your right leg there behind you. Exhale, glide it forward. Rise up to warrior A. Your legs are on separate parallel tracks. Front knees bent. Back leg straight, back foot's on a 45 degree angle. Hips twist forward. Arms up, shoulders relax. That frightening bit. 
I'm going to fly forward into Warrior C. Back legs lifted. Upper body and lower body. Parallel the earth if you can. You can bring your hands to the block of the earth if you need to. And then rise up to Warrior B. Now your feet are in the same point. Equal balance to the front and back body. Shoulders relaxed. Arms out wide. Look over your front fingers. Keep that front knee bent. and Inhale, lean forward. And then lean back for reverse warrior. Again, decompressing the forward twist. Maybe lift a little higher. Now straighten that front knee. Bring the top hand up higher. For reverse triangle to the triangle. In triangle, the most important thing is actively lifting that top end up and keeping that top shoulder back at the same plane as your legs and not actively dumping forward. But really, your front hand is not doing much. You can see it's just kind of hanging out here on my shin. But keeping the arms where they are, exhale, bend that front knee at a side angle. Keep your knee or elbow on your knee. And inside, or you can take a wrap or a partial wrap. Whatever variation of side angle feels right for you. And from here, we're going to float into half moon. Let's bring that right hand outside the right foot in front of it. Left leg up, left arm up overhead. Look out to the side. Try and straighten those legs more floating. And exhale. Come back to warrior B. We're going to turn our feet wide. Hands on our hips. Wide legged forward fold. And exhale, fold forward. We will go this. Do something gentle. We're going to be forearms to the earth. And we're going to take a handstand or headstand if you'd like. That's in your practice. If you're in handstand or headstand, maybe start to come out of it. And slowly rise up to half lift. Heel till your feet closer together. And rise up from the hands and hips. And pull through goddess. For goddess, our heels are together, toes out wide, arms up overhead and star. We're going to exhale, bend our knees, bend our elbows, and maybe lift onto our toes. And exhale, straighten and release. Heel toe your feet back wide. Fold forward, half lift. Walk yourself forward and take a vinyasa float by push up. So, low push up. Inhale for up dog. And exhale for down dog. Take a breath and get a sip of water real fast. Straight out 45 degree angle, hips forward, shoulders relaxed, arms up. Keep that front knee nice and bent. Find equal balance between your front and back body. Make sure that back leg is strong and straight. We're going to float to warrior C. Rise forward and float. And inhale back to warrior B. Just relax, look over those front fingers. Now flip the front ball, lean forward, lean back, reverse warrior. Keeping the arms there, exhale, straighten that front. The legs where they are, inhale the arms back to warrior B arms. So exhale, lean forward and tilt for triangle. Actively lifting up that top hand, back with that top shoulder for side angle. Take whichever arm variation or body you prefer. It's a half moon, planting that left hand outside in front of your left foot. Straighten your legs, open up to your side. And exhale with this back in a warrior B. Heel toe your feet wide. Up for wide legged forward fold. Inhale up. 
Exhale, fold down. Again, do whatever variation is best for you. All right, come on my forearms. Now slowly rise up. Nice skip goddess on this side. So a little more time for the wall again. Slowly walk yourself back forward into a lunge. You take the final vinyasa flow of the sequence. Inhale for up dog. Exhale for down dog forward. Exhale round for cat. Okay, inhale. Your right leg behind you, parallel to the earth, toes point down. Exhale, bind it forward, outside. In knee. For humble warrior, lizard, check your line as your knee tracking over your ankle, not in front of it or beside it. Ankle stay here. We can lower onto your forearms, the forearms on the blocks. We can plant your hands for balancing posture if that's in the practice. Just kind of look something like this. Or you come to Bird of Paradise, where you're spreading your left leg out, right hand under your right leg. I just put my hand here to use that. Keep that. This is totally optional. You could stay a high lizard or low lizard. But I find this to be the ultimate surrender posture. It's very relaxing. It's a reminder. The yoga is often about letting go, kind of about muscling through something. Good inhale, slowly. Rise up back to center. In front by lizard, you take a half split. Or you can slide your foot a little further forward for more fuller expressional splits. Bring your forehead towards your knee if you'd like. Locks under your hands, locks under your hamstring. Whatever you need to have a nice experience here. And then we're going to come back up. And if you have bad knees, come on your back and take a figure four or knee to the chest. Otherwise, come into pigeon. If you turn your foot out to the side of your neck, you start tall, knee outside your hip, hips raise, shins parallel in front of the mat as you taller. You just sit nice and tall hands on your hips. This feels acceptable. So you plant your hands and slowly come down to your forearms. And if that feels good, maybe you slide your forearms all the way forward and still under the earth. Or you can even bend your elbows and bring your hand together and thumbs back to your seat side with a big bump in the back of your spine. Whatever you need today, we will try to you. Welcome to stay here. A few more breaths. Sort of inhale for active pigeon. I'm walking yourself up, putting your right hand in right shin, bending your left knee, left hand behind your foot. And maybe bring your right hand up and forward. Go behind your head. Next, so release your hands. Straighten your left leg. Right leg up behind you, bend your knees, stack your hips. And you can take a few rotation. Or you can flip your dog if you'd like for a wild thing. And exhale, flip back, hands and knees. Inhale, lower your belly for cow. Exhale, round for cat. Inhale, left leg behind you. And exhale, glide it forward. Outside your hands for high lizard, high humble warrior. Check your knees over your ankle. Welcome to stay here. Bring your forearms to the earth or on a block. We'll take a balancing posture if you'd like. Over, surrender, for bird of paradise. It looks impressive, it's really pretty simple. You gotta trust that your leg can go out like that, and then if your body can lunge, 
and the nervous system will do the rest. Continue to breathe. Relax. Splits. Maybe that forehead comes towards that knee. Maybe you think I'm crazy when I say that. Let's see what's right for you. Continue to breathe. Have slowly rise back up. Bad knees come onto your back. Chain parallel to the front of as much as you can. Knee outside your hip. And exhale, start to slowly walk forward. I say slowly, you don't want to pull something while you're doing this. And moving too fast in yoga, in this intense position, is where you can get hurt. You don't want to do that. So, surrender in whatever creation pigeon feels right to you. Welcome to inhale and slowly rise up, or stay where you were. Rise up, bend that back knee, right hand outside your right foot. Well, maybe you fall over. <laughs> Left hand up. And exhale, release your hands gently. Straighten up right leg, left leg up. Bend your knees, take a couple of circles if you'd like. And left foot. Go for a wild thing. Look down, looking up. Straighten your legs. You're pressing your feet near your knees, come off the earth, and you lift your core a little bit off the earth as well. Maybe straighten your arms in a seal. Either of these are trying to get a nice low back stretch. And exhale, release to the earth. Seal around the time, plenty of times. So nice. Inhale, arms up overhead. Rotate onto the back. We have your arms up overhead, legs long, twist the back with a stretch. And then bend your knees. Reach your hands outside your right your shins. Just gently rock side to side. Some circles. Maybe come up to happy baby, bring the soles of your feet to the sky. Hands outside your feet. Just rock back and forth very gently. Maybe bring the soles of your feet together, relax your shoulders. And then bend your knees, arms out like a T. If you need to comfortably come to the earth, maybe place a block that's fully near under your knees. Maybe use that top hand to help pull them down. Just keep that right shoulder planted. Maybe straighten your legs out to the side if that feels comfortable for you. And then slowly rise up to your center. And exhale to your, to your left, or to your right hand. My left. Looking over that left shoulder. Those knees bent. Hands center in the earth or straighten them out towards your hand if that feels good. Do what's right for you. Yes, slowly rise to your center. And plant your soles of your feet, edge of your mat wide. We're going to windshield wiper our legs 
to each side, just do a slightly different spinal twist. Inhaling up, exhaling down. And three or four times on each side, nice and slow. Then we're going to do some work the wall. So if you're not near a wall, find one. This one here. And what we'll do first is a wheel with the wall. We have blocks. Really handy, if not, don't worry about it. You can place them low or medium, just right up against the wall. Enough space between them for your head to come. Your feet are going to come close to your bottom, just like you would in a bridge. And you're going to place your hands like this so your fingers are on the front of the block, and the heels of your hands are on top of your block. And then you're just going to inhale, relax, and exhale up, and look forward towards the wall. And we're ready to come down with your head towards your chest. So you come back. Uh, we'll do a perfuse pose, which is just bring one heel to the other knee. Stretch to the side. And then switch sides. And then if you've had enough, or you just want a really long shavasana, you can start by just bringing your legs up the wall with or without a block under your sacrum. If you want to try some balancing work, you can do that with me. If you really just want to do something moderate, what you can do is not move the curtains off the wall. You can bring your bottom right next to the wall, plant your feet, and start with a bridge. And if that bridge feels good, you can support your low back. And bring your legs up overhead for shoulder stand. And you're gonna hold these longer than I am at the show anymore. And you can bring your legs overhead for a plow. And then you can cycle through that sequence. Maybe 30 to 60 seconds for a posture. If you want to try some handstands or headstands, you're welcome to do that too. I'm gonna to start with the handstand, my feet at the wall. So I plant my hands just like I would in a down dog. Feet are going to be right here at the wall, just like I'm in a dolphin. And then just a little walk my way up the wall. And maybe I bring one leg off, or maybe the other. And then we walk down and just relax for a moment. And then the other side, you try the other direction. And I can do a handstand, headstand, or shoulder stand, or forearm handstand. I think I'm going to start with the forearm handstand today. So that you bring your hands together, your knees are fairly, your elbows are fairly close together. Your hands are about a foot away from the wall or so. You get into a dolphin. And you walk here, don't like that. Not quite. That's okay. You gotta practice it to let me do it better. If you reach there, maybe you bring one leg off the wall, maybe you don't. I'm gonna go to the which is a bit easier for me. My elbows are a little bit wider. Top of my head here. I'm really not gonna put much pressure all on my head. And then I'm actually going to lift my head something off here. And then maybe lift one foot and the other. I come down here.
Yeah, yes, indeed. Now is that sequence I was talking about before. So we're gonna start first. Legs up the wall. Or you're welcome to stay. Do more handstands or headstands. That was right for you. You want to start with legs up the wall for a bit. And then plant my feet on the wall into a bridge. I'll plant my hands. I'll just rise up the shoulder stand. If that's too much, you just do one leg off the wall, the other one on the wall. And rise back up. It's really hard to do those and talk at the same time. So I am just going to first do legs up the wall. I'm going to do three shavasanas today. Legs up the wall. Then I'm going to do a low fish and a proper shavasana. So whenever you do legs up the wall or gymnastic type stuff or shoulder stand, you want to make sure you give yourself plenty of time to rest afterwards. Spend a few minutes on each. Now, looking for other things you could do with the wall. You can always do warrior C with your back foot on the wall. That kind of is actually more challenging than a warrior C. You can start the half moon with your back and legs against the wall. Maybe I'll teach that next week. Because then you can actually come down in like a three quarters moon, like they're in there. And further down, you just hop a little further up. I need a bigger wall, I think, than I have right now. In a few weeks, I can see that it's going to be motivated when I start doing my other sequences out of there. And it should be pretty nice because it's. You know, so you're welcome to stay legs with the wall the entire time. Or you can come back in a fish. But for fish this time, let's go. Low block down and then medium block for our head. Just pour the painting to the wall. My son painted that one. It's a self portrait of him. And at the end of the practice, like straight motion off the side. What you might recognize is this posture for fish. Similar to dolphin, similar to child's pose, and down dog, triangle, as well as shoulder stand, headstand, and handstand. For how we're trying to bring our shoulders back and chest forward, so it's opening our heart. A lot of your instructors, one of the things they'll say the most during sequence is open your heart. And what that means is bring your shoulders back and chest forward. It's undoing what we learn when we do computer pose, or it's cousin cell phone or tablet pose. And um, I don't know why I always laugh at that joke, but it's true, right? Like we spend a lot of our time hunched over, and this is teaching us to do the opposite, to gain more range of motion, flexibility in our shoulders and back and chest. Arms. Open up. Feel that. If this is too painful, I mean, you might try to bolster or just something so you can feel that opening. Or even in Shavasana, you can bring your shoulders back a bit more deliberately. Lift the middle of your back a little bit off the earth as you surrender. So we're going to do that real quick. So if you're in, if you're ready, you can just bring the blocks out. I'm going to I'm kind of rolling my shoulders under like I would for a bridge. And then just sit and try to relax it. You know, a lot of times that's my chin, my jaw. I have no injury there.
Yeah, you're ready to might start to bring some energy back to your hands and feet and wiggle your fingers and toes. Maybe rock your wrists, windshield like where your wrists and ankles side to side. Bring your arms up overhead, your ankles with the front wall. Stretch and bend your knees. Give yourself one more hug. Gently rock side to side. And then inhale, one arm up overhead. And exhale, relax to that side for a couple breaths. And my head is cut off from this fence and the interesting painting in our living room is floating there with just a head, which is kind of a funny look. <laughs> Inhale, slowly rise up through center. Maybe sit on the edge of your block. Sit up nice and tall, close your eyes. Inhale, your arms up overhead. And exhale, release them beside you. Do this a few more times with your own breath. Just reflect how you feel now compared to an hour ago. Maybe reflect back on your intention. Just observe how you feel. And then inhale up one more time. And exhale your hands down to your heart center. Fingers are spread wide. Palms to your sternum. Head down. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide you through your practice today. If you have any questions or requests, just let me know. I um, hope you're keeping your sanity through this coronavirus, coronavirus, um, stay at home stuff. Hope you're feeling well and healthy. I bow to light and sound and all of you. Namaste. Thank you, and I'll be back here tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.